Hey guys, and welcome back to Jordan vs. Life on the building side of life. Now today, we're we'll making arrows. And we're going to be using a spoon, a dowel rod, and a whole bunch of other tools. So, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So now, I'm just going to take the spoon and flatten it down on my homemade anvil. Using this hammer, you can use any type of hammer, it doesn't really matter which type. And so, let's go ahead and begin. Alright guys, now that we got it flattened pretty much pretty well, doesn't have to be completely flat, it's just a spoon. I'm going to take it over to the angle grinder, I'm going to cut out arrowhead shape. But first I'll probably draw on it to get the exact size and arrowhead shape I want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I've got the shape cut out, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it out on the angle grinder. And yet again, I'll be right back. Alright guys, got the arrowhead cut out. Got all these burrs on it, so I'm going to go ahead and hit it up on the grinder. Take it out and then shape it up a little bit more, get it exactly the way I want. So, without further ado, goodbye. Apparently the way a camera works, when you want to record something, you have to press the button. I forgot that part. And so, y'all missed all of me grinding it up and putting on a pretty crappy bevel. 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 So, one thing I did forget to do is add little notches right here. That way, when it's in the stick, I have something to wrap around it and hold the arrow in there. Of course, I'll be using epoxy too, but string will always help. Alright, so for your stick, or in my case, the dowel rod, always make sure you're going against the grain, or across it. You want to cross it up, basically. Because if you put it in there with the grain, the same arrowhead going, like, along the grain, then whenever it hits something, if it doesn't go through, it could have a really high possibility of going right down there and cracking really bad, and basically you get a useless arrow. But if you go against it, then when it hits something, it'll catch it. I think it'll look pretty good. Might put it about there. Not too sure yet. I'll figure it out in a second. Go ahead and I put it in there. And the way I'm going to wrap up the arrow with the rope or string, whatever the hell you want to call it, this is the inside of paracord, nylon string. I'm going to set it right there. I'm just going to wrap it around a few times. Try and get it nice and tight. I have to keep being careful of these things because whenever I got to turn it, it just poke me and it gets on my nerves. Alright, now that I've got enough on here, I'm just going to start going through these loops, going around one, going around again, then up through there, 
then going around, back up again. Basically, you get the idea of how I'm doing this. I'm going to do this a few times. I just realized something. While wrapping it up, I didn't look at it this way. And that's really fat. So I'm just going to go ahead and take some of this off that it doesn't need. So make it skinnier. That way whenever it goes through a um, target practice box or any small game that you may be hunting in the wild has a better chance of actually penetrating instead of stopping at where the rope is. I may have gone a little overboard anyways. All right, so I loosened it up and retightened it and didn't use as much string. And then what I went ahead and did is I burned a little bit of it. That way, whenever I go to put the epoxy on, I don't have to worry about it coming undone. Now, I just said the next step, let's go ahead and add the epoxy. Well guys, I just looked up the actual length for the aeroshaft because I thought this one was a little bit too big and apparently I was right. So the aeroshaft, if you don't know, is just from the, not the head, but the part where the actual place meets, the tip of the shaft, and it goes all the way down to the very end. Now this is 35 inches, and the average length for one is 30. So I'm just going to need to cut a little bit off, and we'll be right back on track. So, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Right now we're just going to add the fletchings onto the back. That's the back part of the arrow and like the things that are on the back. Usually you'll see them as feathers or now with store-bought ones, they're plastic pieces. What they do is they give it wind drag, which causes it to spin like a rifle bullet. And it gives it better accuracy. So, I'm going to go ahead and make these out of duct tape. Now basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be drawing out three fletchings and then I'm going to be cutting them out with a pair of, or not scissors, but a knife. All right, now that I've got them on there, I went ahead and I wrapped some duct tape around these other ends, the extra pieces that I left on there, and I wrapped around the top and the bottom. That way, be extra strong enough to worry them flying off. I also rubbed a little bit of sawdust on here. That way I would get rid of all this like glue and stickiness. That way they wouldn't bend down and stick to each other anymore. Or you could also just make two exact copies and then just put them together, which would have been a lot better. But I didn't think about that in time, and this is what I came up with. So this is what we're going to do. Now all I'm going to do is just cut the little notch out in the back, and this is basically where you be where you knock the arrow. And that's basically where you put the arrow on the bow. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Alright guys, and now we have the arrow completely done. Got the little notch in the back. So let's go ahead and fire it a few times. What do you say?
All right, guys. As we can see, the bow definitely works. And so does the arrow. Best way to uh, get them out is to like grab them by the head where the arrow meets the wood. Like the arrowhead meets the wood. And just start tugging on it like this. You don't want to go to the back and just start yanking on it like that because you have a real possibility if it's stuck in there tight to snap it. So, I'd say for almost 98 cent a bow, or a bow, an arrow, this isn't bad. One thing I did notice is these got shredded. The little anchor things we had, or fletchings. So, maybe try using them out of something else, or maybe doing the other, the double sided one or something. I'm not sure, but. I can make a ton of these for free, so I'm not really too worried about it. Anyways, guys, I'll go ahead and leave you to the end credits. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in on Jordan vs. Life on the Building Side of Life. Now, if you like this type of content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, if you like the video and just want to say that I'm doing a good job, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up button down there too. And if you have any comments about the video or about what I've did, if you have any idea for the fletchings that would be better, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below. Anyways, without further ado, Peace.